Hello, and welcome to Friday STEAM with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library. Each week, I bring you a fun activity that you can do at home while we learn a little bit about science, technology, engineering, math, and making new things. Um, today, we are going to be learning how to make our own fire starters, but they're not just your average fire starter, they're color changing flame fire starters. So these are really fun if you're planning a weekend at home um, for your campfire or your fireplace. Um, and we're gonna talk a little about the science behind how these work. So that is our project for today. You are gonna need a couple of things to get started. Let's see, what if we're, here we are. <laughs> so you're going to need either some paper muffin um, cups or a cardboard paper uh, egg carton uh, container. So whichever you happen to have on hand. Um, I obviously used some really fun, colorful um, muffin cups for this, which are really nice. Um, but these work really well if you wanna make a lot or if you wanna try lots of different colors. Um, let's see, you're gonna need some uh, dryer lint or wood chip or um, sawdust, or even just some uh, old paper kind of, you know, upcycled paper ripped up into small pieces. Anything like that will work, but we need something to help ignite our fire starter. You are gonna need wax. Now that can be some old candles will work just fine. Old crayons that you take the paper off will work. Um, you can buy wax, of course. Uh, you can get beeswax, you can get paraffin wax at the store. So whatever you've got, but you are gonna need enough wax to fill your container. Now, the color changing part. We can use a lot of different things. Typically, um, in things like fireworks, which you may be enjoying this weekend, um, we use what are called metallic salts. Basically, they're a metal combined to chloride to make salt. Sodium chloride is what we know as table salt. But a lot of different salts will work. So you can make these fire starters using table salt. This is rock salt, um, a sea salt actually which works really nicely. Um, this is calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is used during the winter to melt ice. Um, so you can often find that in a hardware store really easily. You can find something called new salt in the grocery store. That's potassium chloride, and that will give you a little bit of a lavender flame. Um, you can find in the, in the um, hardware store something called copper sulfate. Now it's actually a root killer, so you have to be careful using this and take safety in mind, but you can use that. You can also order from science supply stores all kinds of different metallic salts. That I, So I order mine from a place called uh, Home, what is it? I'm blanking. Homeschool Tools, that's it. And it's a homeschool supply um, uh, website but you can order these, they're not expensive, though I often sell them as a kit with everything ready to go. So these are really fun too, and they're nice and pure and easy to use. Um, but you can, of course, use common things that you can find in the hardware store. Different metals will make different colors, okay? Why is that? Well, let me explain. Let's learn the science be behind how we end up with different colored flames depending on what chemical and what salt we put in our fire starter. So, this is an example of light. Light travels as waves, which you can see here. So short wavelengths down on this end are things like gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet rays. These tend to be harmful to our body. That high frequency is not good for us. Ultraviolet rays, for example, um, can burn your skin if you get too many of them. X-rays we use to see inside our bodies, but too much can be harmful. So the shorter frequency or higher frequency, shorter wavelength waves are not so great for us. But as we hit right about in the middle, we get to the visible light spectrum, okay? Visible light, um, basically means that, you know, the white light that you kind of see from light bulbs or the sun, it's actually lots of different colors together, which is pretty neat. So though we see all those lights together and see it as white, you can actually break that light apart into different wavelengths. Shorter wavelengths of visible light are our blues and greens. 
longer wavelengths of visible light are oranges and yellows. And then you get beyond that into infrared, which we use for like remote controls, microwaves, which we use for cooking, and radio waves that we use to actually send sound and information. Um, these longer wavelengths are lower frequency. Um, you can't see them, but they're there around you all the time. So how does this have anything to do with our fire starters? Well, we have a continuous spectrum of light, which is what we tend to see. That's your natural light or light from light bulbs. But each chemical can actually emit a specific wavelength of light. So for example, co example copper emits a green wavelength of light. Um, something like strontium, another fun metal, ex uh, releases a red. So what scientists have figured out is by a lot of trial and error, a lot of work, they have figured out exactly what wavelength of light corresponds to different chemicals. So we call this absorption or emission spectra, and we can use this to actually figure out what's in a chemical. We use this all the time for forensics. Um, we use it in all kinds of science where you might take a chemical, dissolve it in water, and put it through an absorption spectrometer or um, an emission spectrometer or another device, and it actually flames it, heats it up, burns it, and the machine has a special electronic eye that can actually see these different spectra and then correlate them to what wavelength they are and tell you exactly what's in that, that chemical. We also use this with telescopes to tell us what's actually in stars all over the universe. So we can use that kind of special electronic eye combined with our telescopes. And it will tell us, for example, if a, a star far away has a whole lot of magnesium in it or a lot of iron in it, we can actually tell based on the spectra of light that we get back. Um, so it's a really exciting science. It's um, something that is actually used very, very frequently. And it's very, very helpful to our daily lives and to our understanding of the universe even if you may not have ever thought about it before. Okay, coming back. Where am I? Here I am. Okay, so basically we can use the fact that different chemicals emit different light when they're excited, in this case burned, to make different flame colors. So that's really cool, but each different chemical is gonna have a different color flame. I have tested a couple of different of these metallic salts for you. And I'm gonna show you a little video of what they look like so you can figure out what colors go with what. Here we go. I am going to mute myself and I'm gonna play our video. Okay, so I've got my flame going. I'm using a propane torch um, that you could use a Bunsen burner or even a good candle. I am suited up with goggles and gloves. I've got a bucket of water handy just in case. I've dissolved all of my chemicals into uh, water, into um, you know, nice uh, crystal clear water, not from the tap, um, just to get out as much contaminants as possible. And they're in little spray bottles. So we're gonna go ahead and carefully spray them into the flame. I've protected the area with a drop cloth. And uh, here we go. Okay, first up is calcium chloride. Same stuff you would use um, to melt ice on your driveway in winter. Okay. Gives you that kind of deep orange. That burn off for a moment. And next up is sodium chloride. Same thing as table salt. And this one is a favorite. You get a real nice bright result. Bright, bright yellow orange. You let that burn off.
Okay, we're going to move into our reds. This is strontium chloride. Next is one of my favorites, lithium chloride. You can see it's got that maroon colored red, which is just really awesome. Kind of like a burgundy color. Now this is potassium chloride. It's a very subtle change because it actually makes kind of a purple, but we're going to try it anyway, see if we get lucky, see if we can, we're getting most of the, the background right there. All right, we're going to move on to our greens. First up is uh, barium chloride. Let's see, hoping that this shows up well on our camera. There you go, you can see some of the green there. It's kind of a pale lime green. We are using copper chloride. Copper chloride. There we go. And that one's probably of all of them my favorite. I love the green. I kind of have to look for it around the edges and on the top. And of course, we can go a little crazy. And see if we can get this stuff. There we go. And so that is how they make fireworks. Okay, so I know that that didn't all show up so great on camera, but if you want to try it yourself, you can with a parent's help. You are going to need um, some kind of a burner. You can actually use the burner on your stove if you have a gas stove, um, or you can use a Bunsen burner, a good strong candle. I use a propane um, uh, burner like this, a torch. Um, you want to make sure that if you do this, you are working in a safe place, preferably outside, preferably on pavement. Um, you would want to make sure that you have a bucket of water nearby to keep you safe so that we don't have any problems uh, if you should get knocked over. To use your chemicals, you have a couple different options. You can get little coffee stirrers like this, soak them in water, and then just take a little scoop of your chemical and hold it over the flame. That's one way to do it. It's a little tough because the, the coffee stirrer is gonna burn on you. You can use what we call a, um, a loop, which is basically, you can make your own. This is just some steel wire, 17 gauge steel wire, made into a tiny little loop on the top, if you could see that. Okay, I just used needle nose pliers and made a loop. And then I stuck it into a cork. And the idea here is you take either the powder or you dissolve your chemical in water to make what we call an aqueous solution. Okay, aqueous just means in water. And then you dip this and the liquid will form like a little bubble, a little film across that loop. And you put that in the flame. Okay. So that's another way that you can do it. If you want to do it the way that I had on that film, and this is really good if it's one person, like a parent demonstrating for a group, I just put it into a little spray bottle with water. Now, whenever you're going to do this, you want to use distilled water or deionized water preferably not tap water, at least something filtered, because you really want to be able to see your metal change color. And sometimes tap water can have lots of other minerals and metals in it that can make it hard to see. So you can put it in little spray bottles like this, 
you always want to label what you have though. Okay. So you don't accidentally um, mix it up with something else, but you can do a little spray bottle like this and just make sure that you have a drop cloth down. And of course, safety gear whenever you're working with chemicals of any kind. So goggles and gloves, because we are about to make our color changing fire starter. So get my gloves on because we want to be safe. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of the things that we can get at the grocery store for our chemicals. But again, you can order chemicals online to use, and you're going to look for metallic salts. Um, before we get started, I do want to share one more video with you. Now, these kind of salts, these kind of metallic salts, these are what's in fireworks and that give them the color. They also have gunpowder in there, which causes them to explode. And there's some starch to make it all stick together and sometimes even glitter to make it sparkle. The other thing that you often find in fireworks is magnesium. Magnesium is responsible for that bright white and kind of explosive ignition that you see in your fireworks. It's actually a metal, okay, that is flammable. So it's very malleable. It comes in rolls like this. And when you burn it, okay, so if the gunpowder ignites, then you get the flash of this um, as a bright light. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. It burns very hot. Okay, it's not something that you necessarily wanna do at home, but I do want you to see what that looks like so you can see where that pop from a, a um, fireworks comes, comes from. So you can imagine with that high heat and your salt, you're gonna get a big burst of color and that's how fireworks work. So here we go. I'm gonna show you that video. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick demo of magnesium um, being lit. Magnesium is a highly reactive metal. Um, as a reminder, I've got my goggles and gloves on and I have a bucket of water nearby. And here we go. Do not look directly into the flame. It gets quite bright. And that's a magnesium flame. Okay, so now we know what's in fireworks. We've got our salts to make the colors. We've got some starch to hold it together, gunpowder to ignite, and some magnesium to make that big flash. So now to make our mini versions of our fire starters with color changing flames and uh, get going on that. So I already have my wax melted in my wax um, pot. Okay, so I tend to make a lot of candles and stuff. So I've already got that ready to go. If you're melting wax, you probably want to do that in a double boiler. So you would get a pot of water boiling and then put a second pot on top of it and melt your wax in that. That will eliminate any chance of it burning on you. Okay. And will keep it warm without it, you know, potentially uh, catching fire. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to move these out of the way and I'm just going to start by getting a muffin cup. I'm just going to take that out and you're going to do the same thing if you're using a muffin or if you're using the um, egg carton. You can cut your egg carton apart if you like, or you can just do each one and then cut them apart once they're dry. It's really up to you. I'm going to get my dryer lint. I'm going to fill about halfway up, just kind of pulling it apart and fluffing it out. Okay. About halfway there. That looks pretty good. And you would do the same thing if you're using, you know, scrap paper or wood chip or sawdust, whatever you're using. Then I'm going to take my chemicals. So in this case, I'm going to go with the copper because the green is my personal favorite. And I want to add a good amount here. Um, at least a tablespoon. You want to get in there because you want to be able to see your color changing flame. And when you burn these, you're going to put them right into the fire, preferably kind of close to the edge so you can see them. So I've got that in there. I might even put a little bit more around the corners. Now, this will not dissolve in the wax because it is, um, 
It will dissolve in water. It will not dissolve in wax. It is not a polar compound. So you don't have to worry about that. But I am going to put a little bit more lint over it. And if you want to melt crayons into your wax and do a mixture so you get a colored creation here, that's really fun. Part of the reason I'm putting extra lint is not just to help ignite the fire starter, but to trap my um, chemicals in here so that when I touch them, I don't have to worry about wearing gloves because it's all kind of trapped inside. Okay, now I'm just gonna very carefully add my wax a little at a time. You wanna work on a heat safe surface, which is what I'm doing. My mat is heat safe. You can actually hear it. Sometimes you'll hear it kind of soak in. My wax is a little warmer than it probably should be right now. It's boiling a bit. And all the bubbles are popping out. Okay. So you just kind of want to fill it close to the top of the top of the cup. I don't go all the way up. Okay, and all your bubbles are gonna pop out. And once you let it sit, it'll cool and it'll become hard like this. Then you can just store it in some Ziploc bags, clearly marked so you know what they are um, and what color they should burn. And um, you can use them on campfires or on your fire pit. And carefully, if you wanna use them indoors, you wanna make sure that you're using a fireplace that has um, some kind of a closing, like a glass door because these aren't um, too dangerous, but they are chemicals that can cause, um, cause you some trouble. And you want to make sure you're using them outdoor in the open air, preferably, okay? Um, so there you go, that's it. You just let that harden up. Okay. Okay, so you can make a bunch of these. You can put multiple color um, chemicals into one or you can put just one and then make lots of different ones. I do recommend when you put these into the fire that you put them kind of closer to the edge so that you can actually see the color a little bit better because sometimes if you put them right in the center, you won't get to see the flames quite as much. Um, remember, you do prefer to use these outdoors. If you do use them indoors, it should be in a fireplace that has closing doors so that um, no potential fumes can get out. These are relatively safe, but we do want to take precautions when we use them. So I hope that you make some color changing flame um, fire starters for 4th of July weekend. If you do and you take pictures, make sure you put them online and use the hashtag Warren Lib so we can see what you're making. Um, keep in mind that you can go to our website anytime for all the great event listings that we have. We've got magicians, we've got animals, we've got story times, STEM, crafts, music, all kinds of really fun things um, all summer long. Our website also has all the information on our summer reading where you can win all kinds of fun gift cards for reading great books. So make sure you check out our website for all the great things that are going on with the library. We may not be able to be with you in person quite yet, but we are coming to you online to offer as much as we're able this summer. Okay, my name is Sandy Roberts and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. I look forward to seeing you on Monday uh, at noon for Maker Camp at two for Maker Monday, and at three for Animating with Code. Um, make sure you register early and have a wonderful 4th of Ju July weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon.